Hello everyone and welcome to my new video and what is this video about? Well this video is about um, setting up custom channel strips and having a look at saving things as default presets so that they will load a certain way when you drop them into a project. Uh, this is slightly different to my normal videos. I've got a precariously dangling webcam pointing at the push so I can demonstrate this and I'm also using some slightly different equipment which is why my voice sounds different and things on the other side of the room that I would normally gate out are there for all to hear. So, but hopefully that won't make the content any uh, different in terms of quality. I don't know, we'll see. So before I start I just wanted to say that I am now currently uh, doing one-to-one -one private tuition uh, via Zoom or whatever um, uh, online calling platform is suitable for you. If you would like to get one-to-one -one tuition from me, from anything to do with Ableton Live, Max MSP, uh, uh, Reason Studios, um, you know, like anything from like beginner, beginner stuff to like really hardcore intermediate stuff, uh, music production, uh, workflow things, um, music theory, composition, recording, mixing, anything, give me a shout. I'm very flexible at the moment because of lockdown and I'm off work. So my rates are um, at 25 British pounds for one hour or two hours for 40 British pounds. If you wanted to book like a, a bulk of, of sessions in one go, then I'll give you a discount. Uh, just something to think about if you're looking for some uh, bespoke consultancy with your music. Right, okay, so basically what I wanted to talk about was um, something that I've been talking a little bit with people in private lessons over the last couple of weeks, and this is this thing about uh, default presets for devices and for tracks. And I got, um, I've been working on some tracks myself when I can, mostly from um, like stems where I've made the track, uh, bounced out all the stems, and then I'm importing it back in to, um, you know, like mix it. And I started to notice that I was going through these repetitive procedures of reaching for the same plugins each time I pulled in a track, um, which was getting rather tiresome. But and also I was finding that I was gravitating a little bit more to using the push to like do some mixing to get away from the screen and the mouse and to sort of, you know, try and use my ears a little bit more and less of my eyes. And so I wanted to like show you a way that you could maybe like make some, uh, whoops, make some um, like channel strips, like a default channel strip. Um, I'm on uh, just like an empty track right now. Uh, and I've just hit add device. I'm going to go to like audio effects and have a look at what audio effects we have here. And then I was I was thinking like, you know, what if you could just have like a channel strip of like all your favorite like native or like third party plugins ready to go every time you did something. And I'm sure that you probably know all of this if you're a seasoned Ableton user, but perhaps to some of you, this might not be immediately obvious. So short break there. Oh. This setup that I'm going for is probably more geared towards like a post-production se uh, session where you've maybe got like some stems from a track um, or maybe you're working in a more kind of old school way of maybe you're working with acoustic instruments and you just kind of want to have some things there ready to start mixing to sculpt stuff so that you're getting close to that mixing stage. Um, what kind of things would you want? Well, let's have a look. I suppose like maybe if you were working with things like drums and vocals, you might want a gate. And I'm sort of trying to think of that kind of old school kind of SSL console sort of channel strip setup where you might have like a, a gain and then you would have your, um, your gate and your dynamics and your EQ. So actually maybe like we might just chuck in a, um, a utility to start with. I've propped up this push, which is probably going to knock when I push a button. So I'm just going to hold it as I do that. Okay, so I've now added that utility. And the layout on here, on the push, is really, really nice. Um, we can go into the main effects. We can turn a few things on and off with buttons. 
but everything is quite nicely laid out. So I've got my utility there. If I wanted to maybe adjust the gain of something on the way in, then I could. And I think if I hold, oh no, shift gives you, if you hold shift on your push, then you get very, very fine resolution of numbers. And I think if you hit, if you hold delete and touch the encoder, it resets it back to the default. Um, so you might want uh, a utility plugin on your channel strip. You might want to invert the phase. So, um, you know, you've got your left and right phase invert there, and then you can choose whether, whether it's the left or right mono or whatever. So that's kind of something you might want. You can keep that in there. I'm going to go add device again. And this time I'm going to put a gate in. So I might go to audio effects and I'll go down to gate, scroll down here. This is These encoders are so smooth, it's quite easy to scroll past stuff. Okay, so I've got my gate, I'm going to hit load. Okay, so now I'm in the gate and then I can choose whether I want, um, you know, adjust my threshold. And then if I need to jump back to the utility, I just press the utility. They're labeled along there, see? Yeah, get it. This is this is pretty good. Okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna go add device again, and I may be gonna choose a compressor this time. I go to audio effects and go down to compressor, and I'll just hit load. And already the compressor is laid out in a very very nice way. And this, and also because this has got more pages, if you press this button here, you get sub pages down here for the device. So we can go to the side chain. I can choose my side chain input from push. That's pretty good. Um, and then I've got the side chain EQ which I can choose. This is this is nice. This is getting you away from the computer and giving you a more analogous sensation of like actually working with the track. Let's go back here. Okay, and so finally I want to get to the EQ, which is kind of my favorite of this setup so far. I'll go add device, I'll go to audio effects, I'll go down to EQ, EQ8. Oh no, that's EQ3. EQ8, here we go. Let's pop that in. And this is really nice. Um, I've been exploring using this EQ from the push quite a lot. Why don't I pull in uh, something now? We can sort of just have a little listen. So I've got my Hyper Real Breaks folder of drum breaks that I made, which is on my Bandcamp. I'm being a little bit self-promotery today. Might as well just be honest. Um, you can get this uh, from Bandcamp. There's about, I don't know, 500 breaks that I made um, that are just ready to plonk into your project and stuff. So why don't I just drop this in here? That's a little fast. So um, I'm just going to knock this down to re-pitch and I'll put the tempo to something like 120. Okay, so already I can hear, look at that display there. That's exactly the same display that's on the plugin. That is just so silky and nice. So let's go back to um, the, ga the gate here. So let's just say as an example that this is like a bit of audio that I want to work on. I can start gating it. Maybe a little bit more release. Just as an example, you know, I'm not like going to remix Dark Side of the Moon or anything. I'm kind of okay with the gain, so uh, you know I might jump to the compressor now. Let's see what the compressor's doing. So the compressor's got this display on it, the same that it has on the plugin, which is just very nice. I, don't, I, I haven't actually looked at the computer apart from when I dropped that drum loop in. This is very nice. So I can sort of start to experiment with my compression settings here. I can see the gain reduction happening on that little white uh, GUI thing. I'm peaking really badly on the master. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so I'm just going to have to jump back to the computer now. I should have done this before I started the video. If you've seen my videos before, you'll know that I always forget to do that. Right, let's go back to here. Okay, I'm just going to jump into session so I can fire off that clip. Okay, so what if, for example, that um, maybe I wanted to reorder the chain. Well, I can actually do that. And let's say I wanted to compress my signal after I've EQ'd it. Well, I can hold the button that has the effect on it under this. It says compressor there, and then I can just flick this knob and it will move it to next in the chain. 
that's pretty good. Like maybe you might want to compress something and then gate it afterwards. I'm not sure why you would, but like, or you might want to um, maybe, yeah, you might want to put uh, do some phase correction on your track after you've done all the processing or something. You can just, you know, like maybe I might want to move the utility to the end of the chain. I just go like that. There we go. Now I've moved it to the end, but actually I want to put it back. So I'll move it back like that. And actually, I kind of want the compressor back where it was as well. So I'm just kind of like in my head using imaginary signal flow of an old console. So let's go back to where we were. OK, so let's look at the EQ now. So this is kind of my favorite. So you can. Let's say that. Um, OK, I, I, I actually want a, uh, a low pass on band one, sorry, a high pass on band one. Uh, that's always cutting 30 hertz. Uh, okay, that's fine. And let's say that maybe I want um, another band. Band 8, I want to be like a low pass. Um, and I'll turn that on. And that's cutting it uh, 18k. You know, that'll do for me. You know, they're just like a, a pair of ranges that you know, from what I know about mixing, which isn't much, that you don't really need or want in your music. Um, okay, and I could start EQing here. This is really, really nice. I go to like band three here, find the frequency that I want here, and then boost it. Get my cue like this. I could find some frequencies that I don't like or want to take out. Maybe that ringy on the snare there, I can take that out like that. It's just lovely. I really, really like it a lot. There's some resonance happening down there. I mean, this isn't the best example because I actually tried to EQ all of these when I made the sample pack. But, um, Okay, let's, that's fine. Um, let's actually go back to the compressor. Um, and I think if we press and hold the compressor, we get multiple pages there as well. I wanted to see what that EQ was doing. Let's go to EQ. So if I press the... Yeah, so we have various pages here. We've got the main page, and then we've got um, the bands split. So we've got the four band where we have frequency one, resonance one, frequency two, resonance two, or get what, yeah, and then blah, 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 blah. Same for another four bands, eight bands. We've got some interesting parameters here to explore that we can use all from the push. It's very, very, very good. Now, okay, so now that we've explored that, let's just say, for example, that um, I'm going back to the computer now. So I'm turning off some of these bands that I don't want. Um, and actually, as it stands, there are some parameters that I've tweaked here. Um, which I don't want. So I'm just going to reload the compressor and I might just reload the gate as well. Um, and I, I actually, I want to go back to the push now and see if there's... So this is when I'm a little bit out of my depth and I don't know how you would turn it on and off. Um, maybe it's select. No. Okay. Shift. No. Is it mute? Ah, okay. So if you hold mute and press the effect along here, it bypasses the effect. That's fine. Okay. So what I'm just going to do now is I'm going to take these. I'm just going to copy them to that track, to a different track. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Look at Ableton. Stop clicking at push. So, yeah, this is the interesting bit. So what we could do now is we could, uh, now that we've sort of decided that those are some plugins that we want every time that we have an audio track. We can go save as default audio track. Uh, a default audio track already exists. Do you want to overwrite? Yes, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. So now, any time that um, we create a new audio track, those devices are all ready there, which is great. So let's say, for example, that you're maybe doing a mix for someone or you're doing a mix for yourself and you're pulling in the stuff into the session and you've got like some stems. Someone sent you some stems, like a bass guitar track, a vocal track, guitar track, kick, snare, 
snare over um sorry uh, drum kit overheads things like that you're dropping them in and you want to start mixing straight away this is a great way to speed that up um and you can set these however you want maybe you might just want like one eq on it or something i find myself when i'm mixing i'm pretty much always 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 reaching for um an eq and cutting 30 hertz off it's just a thing that i do so um let's say that if i uh so that what we've created there that's the default state for a track but we could um, have a default state for the eq so if i pulled in the eq8 here and I um, I switched off all these bands because I don't really want them on. But I said that I wanted band one to be a high pass. Um, yeah, at 30 hertz. Uh, maybe I might have a little bit more Q. Let's just say, let's say 0.8 Q. And I want it to be in that state whenever I drop it on a track. So I can go, uh, where is it? Save as default preset. And now any time that I drop that onto a track, it's going to be in that state, which is great because I... It's one thing to have to reach for the EQ. It's another thing to then constantly set it to something that you just want. Um, that's incredibly handy. So I like that a lot. So now if I was to say delete all of these tracks, and I went back to my sample pack, my Hyper Real Break sample pack available on Bandcamp made by myself. I played the drums as well. This is me on the drums. Um, you know, they're for, it's for making drum and bass, break, core, hip hop, whatever. There's loads of different um, styles here. So this, this one's kind of like a closed mic one. If I just drag that into an empty clip, oh look, all of those devices are loaded. Isn't that great? So I can start getting creative here, maybe. I don't need that gate up to. I want to compress it a little bit, maybe. I want to EQ it a bit, maybe. Um, Let's go to band. Let's go to band two. Let's do some bizarre experimental. Let's turn band two on. Let's do some bizarre experimental uh, EQing here. Let's boost and do a like a cut, a boost and a cut. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> that's pretty. That's pretty hardcore. Why don't we do the same? Uh, um, Let's do another band. I'll do band seven. I quite like thinking of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't want to have band seven like down in between one and two. So I like to think in left to right with this with this interface. So I'm gonna go for band seven, I'll turn band seven on, and I'll do a stupid, stupid EQ curve on that as well. So we'll do like a sort of what is that? That's like a shelf, isn't it? So Stupid EQing I'm doing it. Okay, but like, I'm, I'm starting to think now, oh, I've been a little bit too stupid and aggressive with that EQ. Um, maybe I might want to put that EQ before the compressor. That's okay. We'll just hold that, and then we'll move it to there. Now it's before the compressor. Now the compressor is squashing all of that low end, that stupid low end I've just added. Let's have a look at this. Okay, let's maybe pull our output gain down a little bit here on this compressor. Oh, I've squashed that now. <laughs> this is this is stupid mixing I'm doing, okay? When you when you use this approach, you're going to like be much better at it. Because you're better at mixing than I am. I am terrible. So jumping between all the bands, I'll admit, is a little bit fiddly, but. EQing is not a fast process, is it? It's something that you spend a little bit of time on. You want to get right. You're sculpting. Sculpting? Sculpt, sculpting. Oh my god, look what I've done to that track. That's, that's disgusting. The low end sounds good, though. I've done a nice smack on that kick drum. Anyway, so there you go. If you have a push, um, this is a really, really nice way to explore doing some mixes with your tracks and if you don't have a push then you know don't worry too much because um you can still use this approach for creating default audio states for your tracks you can do the same for a midi a midi track you know let's say for example that um you know you uh, maybe you always want to have 
a MIDI effect on it. Maybe you always want to have a, a MIDI effects rack or, or there's one max instrument that you need to have or something. You can just plonk it in there. You can't do it for send and return tracks, um, which is uh, a bit of a shame. I wonder if it does it with groups. No, I don't think it does. So it's just MIDI tracks and um, and uh, audio tracks. But yeah, so that's something that I thought was quite interesting. Um, another example maybe is that, like, for example, I do I, I use a lot of uh, uh, random. Uh, uh, whenever I pull in a, a velocity plugin, it's set to random across zero to one hundred twenty-seven because I set the operation to both the mode to fixed, the random to sixty-four, and the whoops, and the output high to sixty-four, and then I went save as default preset so whenever I drop that in now I know it's always going to do that so that was just a little hint tip hint tip yeah a tint a hip so thank you for watching if you want some private tuition give me a shout either send me in uh well um send me a, a letter uh, uh, send me a mail send someone to my door send a, a mess in messenger boy um send uh, send a message in a bottle get like a, a piece of string and a, attach it to a, an empty pot noodle and throw that to me. I'll get it another and I'll listen to you speak. And okay, I'm going. Bye. <laughs>